Hello, this is John Kenalopoulos from Athens, Greece, New York City, New York. Very excited to present to you this quite bizarre case. This is a young gentleman who about 16 years ago had a successful Intex placed, as you can see here, horizontally for keratoconus. So he did very well. It was just this eye treated. The other eye was good on corrected. And as you can see here, he presented in the middle of the summer here in Greece with his serious infection and hypopion. We treated him with antibiotics. The infection cleared, but then the area in front of the intact started to melt. And uh, this is the beginning of the melting. Um, actually, uh, it perforated at the 9 o'clock position. We were uh, obligated to place uh, cyanacrylate glue. And uh, following that, uh, we decided to perform, instead of a penetrating graft, a patch graft. This is the preparation of the patch graft. It is the anterior 450 microns of a cornea. The actual donor cornea was used for a DSEC case. And uh, this is the residual cornea that we did not use. We're soaking it with riboflavin, 0.1%, as you can see, placed upside down. And following soaking, we use the KXL1 device by Vidro to treat with uh, 30 milliwatts per centimeter square for a total of um, 4 minutes and 7.2 joules of energy. And after this uh, treatment, moxifloxacin antibiotic, a uh, 5 millimeter handheld tree fine, and I'm going to try and create an annular graft from this cornea button. Uh, free handing at this point, so a 5 millimeter handheld tree fine to remove this eccentric central button that we will not use in this case. I will use the residual rim to create an annular graft to place, and of course, uh, you'll be uh, able to understand better in just a few seconds the reason why the graft is formed this way. I'm removing the residual epithelium. You can see the riboflavin placed on the patch graft. And this is the eye with the glue. It has been already six days. The glue comes out really readily. And you can see how the cornea over the um, intact has melted. Before placing the uh, glue, we had removed this inferior horizontal intact. And you can see how initially it was placed uh, elsewhere in Greece. Again, this was 16 years ago. It was placed slightly eccentrically to be inferior to the central pupil, so probably centered around the cone. And we're left with basically a uh, very thin uh, stroma layer and decimates. And I'm going to, again, freehand using now a 9mm tree fine, try and trim down this annular patch craft and create a um, initial version of it that um, will fit the defect created after we remove the debris uh, from the melted cornea. And although this seems to be quite large, experience has uh, taught me that after suturing it would probably be good enough and we'll see so uh, during the procedure. We can also see the superior intact that's still present and the um, stromal deposits accumulated through the years. We're sure, of course, uh, a few weeks after the uh, antibiotic treatment, vancomycin and citriaxin used the fortified for the initial infection. We're sure that there's uh, no keratitis present. We're starting to Suture, this patch graft, this is the toughest suture probably because it's very near the visual axis of the patient. The eye is blocked with peribulbar anesthesia. And uh, we're going along suturing this patch graft in place. And you can already appreciate it, the fact that um, it starts to fit in place regardless of the fact that it was uh, quite larger than the defect. It's starting to take uh, form and to um, complete the uh, cornea defect. And uh, we will now uh, create an incision right next to the superior intact. They will be removed at this point. 
a 15 degree blade used to enter near the intact place a reverse Sinsky hook to uh, enter the little hole that the uh, intercornea ring segment has and then deliver the ring segment outside the cornea. The reason we're removing this is of course to avoid any future complication in this eye from the upper intact and also to place as you can see here riboflavin solution. We're going to undergo a second session of cross-linking. We saw the preparation of the annular patch graft. I'm trying to place riboflavin in the channel. There's still air there obstructing the riboflavin placement. With a paracentesis on the other side, I'm able to fill the channel with riboflavin and now place it under the patch graft and try and uh, undergo a, another session of uh, high fluence cross-linking. I will soak the um, cornea and this is the KXL2 device or the mosaic. This is pupil guided with a tracker and will treat the peripheral cornea from four millimeters to nine millimeters with again 30 milliwatts for a total of uh, five minutes, total of uh, nine joules delivered. You can see here the actual treatment and then donut shape hyperfluorescence and this is the eye a week after vision surprisingly is 2025 a month later patient is 2025 uncorrected we'll see a um, sign fluke derived the tomography in a few seconds there is no sign of infection the cornea is clear and quiet we had the opportunity to follow this patient for up to two years these are the pentacam surprisingly a very uh, balanced astigmatic cornea and here we are almost two years later with uh, all sutures out a clear central cornea we'll see some OCT cross-section images shortly so very nice result and again under the context of avoiding a penetrating graft in this patient this is central cornea and we'll go and see the side by cross-section and see the patch graft and how deep that cornea had melted and how well this patch graft have, has behaved through the years. Uh, almost two years later, now the patient is uh, 2030 uncorrected, about uh, one and a half Doppler astigmatism. He's 2020 corrected and doing very well. I hope you found this uh, case interesting. We have reported previously some long term complication with intracornea ring segment uh, placement in keratoconus. This is definitely one of the most remarkable we had. Thanks very much for your attention. This is John Canalopoulos signing out.